The official modding support for City Skylines 2 together with the mod site is not yet out, but that did not stop modders to do their thing and already release a good number of pretty useful tools for adding more game features or tweaking the existing ones. So I of course did the only logical thing and downloaded every single one of them to test them out and in this video let me introduce the first 21 mods that I found interesting. Since we do not have the official modding support yet, it might be a good idea to first tell you how to even get these mods and how to install them. It's actually super easy. The first thing you need is the Unity Engine Mod Loader, Bepinex. Best way to get it is straight from GitHub, get the stable version 5. You will download a zip file, open it and copy its contents into the folder with cities2.exe. So if you're on Steam, that would be in your Steam folder, Steam apps, common, City Skylines 2. Then run the game so you get into the main menu and shut it down again. The Bepinex folder should then look like this. And most importantly, you will have the plugins folder right here. That is where you will be downloading all your mods. Now, you can either do this manually or by downloading a mod manager, either the Thunderstore or possibly others. Since this is just a temporary solution before PDX mods launch, I'd rather not install something I won't need, so I will just copy in the mods manually. It's easy anyway. The two places where I find mods are the Thunderstore, where I can just click on manual download instead of the other button, or I'm following the City Skylines modding Discord, where authors give direct links to their GitHubs. That's the only two places I can recommend right now. Beware that downloading mods that you manually put into your game can cause all kinds of problems, not just with the game, if you download the mods from who knows where. If you are downloading things directly from GitHub, then if you've never done that before, uh, there is this releases button on the right side, just click that and the topmost post will be the latest release. Click on the little arrow next to Assets if it's not opened by default and download the mods zip file. Some mods might have different versions depending on your Bepinex version. Some mods will be zipped with the main folder, so just copy that into your plugins folder and you're done. Some other mods will not have the folder, it will be just the mod files directly zipped, so you will need to extract that zip file inside the plugins folder if you don't want to manually create a folder for it. Some mods are then activated after just opening the game into the main menu and shutting it down again. That is where I need to remind you, once again, just like in CS1, read those mod descriptions to know what you are doing. But now, let's finally go and see those 21 mods. The first two mods that I would like to show you are Historical Start and 529 Tiles. The 529 tiles has its own options here in options, even in the main menu. Uh, you can, I believe that this is by default on, you can unlock all tiles on a new map or on existing save file, or you can just provide extra tiles at start or allocate more tiles to milestones. Now I'm just going to start a new game and you will immediately see what the historical start mod means. So I just loaded into a new map and as you can see it's completely unlocked because I have those 529 tiles enabled. So the entire City Skylines 2 playable map is completely free for me to build on. Now the historical start mod does three things. It allows you to start building railways right from the start because, you know, some cities started growing around, for example, a train station, which you can now place without placing the rail yard first. You can also do all the shipping things and you can build farms, for example, or any kind of specialized industry because, you know, if you want to build like a small town that just uh, started with uh, some kind of farms, then you cannot really do that in Vanilla CS2, but with Historical Start you can. All right, I'm in my old city and you can immediately notice that I have completely full demand. Why is that? Well, because I downloaded the Infinite Demand mod. It does exactly what it says. It's just going to make your demand infinite, so you can just build away. Next thing that you can notice is this backpack button in the upper left corner, which is actually super similar to the unified UI from City Skylines 1. If I'm going to click it, it's going to show me these seven mods that are just going to open their own window. So right from the start of modding CS2, it's just nice to see that uh, these kinds of things are taken care of already. But anyway, let's just go through these. So 
City Monitor, that's a pretty straightforward mod. As you can see, it's going to open the City Monitor window, of course. It's going to give you all of these stats that you would otherwise have to click through all the info views to get, but here you just have them summarized like this. You can click on settings and get rid of some that you don't like. Moving on to Extended Hotkeys mod. This one is actually super surprising because you might think that it's just going to give you some keyboard hotkeys for things that are already in the game, but uh, you would be mistaken, as was I, because look at that. This one is actually going to give you anarchy mode after pressing Alt A. So yeah, extended hotkeys is basically anarchy mode. That's that's actually pretty neat. It works a little differently right now. Oh, there's a car accident. Um, it's going to, if I'm going to press Alt A, it's going to give me the anarchy symbol there when I'm when I'm just placing things. And now, if something's in the red, it's going to show me that it's overlapping items. Yeah, but if I click. I'm still going to be able to build it when I have Anarchy enabled, yeah? So, yeah, Anarchy. But there are also other very interesting hotkeys, like for example, holding control and just moving your mouse wheel. It's going to cycle through tool modes with, uh, with road building, for example. Uh, then I can just press Alt and hold scroll. It's actually going to cycle through elevation. And yeah, by the way, I'm going to mention it later, but I also unlocked the elevation steps, as you can see. And then there are other very, very interesting hotkeys, as you can read over there. So since I already mentioned it, there is the unlimited elevated road mod. This mod actually requires you to install it, run the game and then close the game because it's going to create uh, like a configuration file where you're going to manually type in these kinds of restrictions. Uh, I believe that by default, I did not change anything, right? And I, I believe that by default, it's going to give me uh, one kilometer elevation maximum. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's trying to scroll further, but it's going to default back to one kilometer, which is probably more than enough for a bridge. I think that this mod is also able to configure the spacing between pillars, or it might uh, just give get rid of pillars entirely. Continuing with the backpack mods, there is the map texture replacer. This is basically the mixer from City Skylines 1. Although right now it's very limited, it's kind of like a proof of concept, really. You can change only the map textures, you cannot change any parameters to them, but it's interesting how it works. And it's actually quite interesting to see how you can already improve some of the textures, especially cliffs. So it comes with its own uh, desert map theme. If I'm going to click the load texture pack, it's just going to give me the ordinary windows uh, open file where I can just choose a zip file with the theme that you download and it's just going to load it manually. The mod is a little unstable right now. Sometimes you might actually lose the theme. You just need to load it again. Well, anyway, uh, there is, there's also, for example, another pack that I downloaded, which was uh, made by Chameleon. And I believe this pack was uh, made from some CS1 uh, pack texture theme and yeah, it's just uh, it's just working. Obviously, you cannot change the tiling right now and all these other parameters. So, you know, it's just a work in progress. Next up, we have unemployment data. This one is going to give you just a very useful unemployment overview. So actually similar to the demographics mod to CS1. Next, there is the extended tooltip. And this is probably the most useful mod right now. At least I think so. So if you're going to click it, it's just going to give you some options for the actual mod but uh, you're going to immediately see what the mod does when you hover over some buildings, especially industrial buildings. Look at that. It's going to immediately tell me at the mouse hover, but you can change the behavior, by the way, if it's going to be on mouse hover or not, but it's going to tell me the level, efficiency, employees, uh, stock actually, what it makes and these kinds of things. It works for vehicles too. So for example, this delivery van, it's going to tell me that it's buying this taxi. It's going to tell me how many passengers it has. Do I have a bus over here? Yep, there it is. So bus, if it's en route, how many passengers, residential buildings as well. It's going to tell me, it's going to build, tell me the rent, for example, that's pretty cool. And level households, all these very, very useful things. If you think that, uh, especially for example, this mixed zoning, if it's giving you too much information, it's kind of cluttering the screen maybe, then you can just get rid of some of the, some of the things that it's telling you. If I don't care about, I don't know, rent or these different things, then I can just click it away. So 
yeah, actually a super useful mod, this one. Another mod is the vehicle counter, which does exactly that. It just counts active vehicles on the map right now. It doesn't do anything else apart from having this button to remove all the vehicles. Next up is the legacy flavor mod. And this one also does some surprising things that you would probably not guess it from the name. So for example, that's like the first thing that I noticed, it can override weather. Yeah, look at that. I can I can just tell it to snow. You can also very quickly set visual time of the day. So for example, the golden hour for that long shadows, or you can switch it to night or day. But I guess that the most important part of the legacy flavor mod, apart from all of these other buttons, is uh, for example, the zone colors. So you can actually change the colors of the different zones. If you, for example, don't find them too different, you cannot really tell them apart, then you can just change that if you want to. You can change these, so that's actually pretty good. And it's mostly intended for color blindness uh, tweaks. Now, there are also the zone settings, uh, which is supposed to give you some more control to make it seem like City Skylines 1 if you if you want it to, right? So yeah, that's legacy flavor. You might have already noticed that I do not have the road wear on roads, which is actually making the road texture a little too plain. But uh, again, I suppose that uh, with the map texture replacer mod later, we're gonna be able to do something about it. Uh, make it just, uh, you know, more detailed or something, or include different kind of road wear, not the vanilla one. Well, anyway, you can remove the road wear with road wear remover mod. Simple as that. And since we are already looking at this intersection, let me talk about the traffic lights enhancement mod. So it's basically traffic manager or like very, very early version of the traffic manager from CS1. So right now you can change how uh, traffic lights behave, although very simply, and you can change the arrows. You can change where the lanes are going. So it's, it's right here, it's in the road services, uh, traffic lights. I'm just going to click on, oh yeah, I have the anarchy still on, I don't need it. I'm just going to click on the road and it's going to give me the traffic lights enhancements window. I cannot move the window as you can see. I can, for example, switch the traffic signals to be split phasing, which uh, I'm not really sure if it does what I think it does, but I think it's just uh, giving green light for one road, then another, another, another. It's probably not exactly all that good because it's going to slow down the intersection a lot. But uh, advanced split, split phasing, uh, not quite sure what that one does, but protected left turns is probably what most of us uh, want out of traffic lights. So this is going to increase capacity of those left turns a lot. Unfortunately, you cannot control which roads get the protected left turns. So even some tiny roads get them, which, uh, you know, if you have like a main road and uh, just some kind of side roads connected to it, then it might just slow down the main road too much. You can also give pedestrians a green face while cars have red face, all of the cars. So you will not have those uh, left and right turns just bumping into pedestrians on the crosswalks, but it's obviously going to slow down cars a lot. You can also, oh yeah, by the way, look at that. Uh, I had an autosave and it triggered the uh, the theme mixer mod to, to break, right? So I will have to go back and uh, load the, the theme again. Okay, and the other option in here is always green right turns. So that's basically turn right on red. Yeah, that's the American thing, for example. That's, that's kind of useful if you have heavy right turns and you do not have crosswalks like I don't have over there. But this is probably the thing that most of us were waiting for. So lane direction tool, experimental. Right now it has some kind of glitches where, for example, the arrows are going to completely disappear, but it is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I'm going to open it and it works like this. You have the lane and then you have the small button on top of the lane where you're going to uh, just switch the lanes where you want the cars to go. So I think I, for example, want to have quite beefy right turns. So I'm actually going to have this... Uh, this uh, left turn uh, uh, removed, and I'm just going to have this lane going straight, this one left, and these two turning right, okay? So this mod just shows us the possibilities for future updates, I guess. Right now, it's kind of better. Well, it's obviously better than vanilla CS2 for sure, uh, definitely with the arrows and uh, with the protected left turns, but you still don't really have control over, for example, how long the phases are. Sometimes they are super short, even if there are a lot of cars 
trying to turn there. So, you know, proper traffic manager is still quite needed. But this other mod, Extended Road Upgrades, is exactly what I've been waiting for. And uh, it's just amazing because this is what we are struggling with right now. Uh, City Skylines 2 introduces that embankment or retaining wall features where it's, uh, you know, if you're going to put it uh, into like a trench, it's going to give you the retaining walls. If you are going to build it somewhat elevated, but not quite already elevated, uh, no, not that, then it's going to give you the embankment. But you cannot really control it, right, in Vanilla CS2. Well, now with this mod, you can. You're going to go once again into road services and look at that. You have all these different options. So I can, for example, click the key, which is uh, the embankment, I guess. You are going to aim it to the to the part where you want it built. Sometimes it's going to be a little clunky. I guess, well, it's there, but uh, you know, I would have to build the roads much, much higher or move it higher with move it, for example, when it's finally going to come out. But maybe on this other side, the retaining wall, I can click that and it's going to give me that nice retaining wall. I can obviously right now, for example, lower the terrain around here. It's going to give me the key right there and it's going to give me the retaining wall on the other side, right? So you can finally, finally properly control it. And by the way, there was obviously that limitation for building on water, right? Well, we obviously now have the anarchy. So I'm just going to click or press uh, Alt A and I can just build the road over water. It's going to give me the symbol that it's in water, but I can do that. I obviously don't want to do this thing, but when I was, for example, building that, uh, well, this road on the side, basically like a key, right? Then it would not allow me to build it in water or over water, even though it would be kind of realistic. You can do that in CS1, where it's going to just build it on the shores or it's going to create the shore. So together with the anarchy, together with uh, this, then you can finally do the keys much, much easily. Or you can also just switch into tunnels and elevated versions, just like in CS1 with road tools. Next, there is the line tool, and it does pretty much exactly the same thing as in CS1. So you're going to activate it by pressing Control L. It's going to give you the line tool window. These settings are pretty self-explanatory. So for example, if I want to do like a line of trees, I might want to switch on random rotation. I can change spacing. I can do, for example, the fence mode. So it's exactly the same as in CS1 with perhaps slightly fewer features at start. Obviously right now it's not exactly all that super useful because there is no detailing except for trees in CS2. But what's interesting is that the line tools right now even work for ordinary buildings, like these plopable buildings. And I believe they don't actually cost money when you place them with line tools. So I can, for example, do it with uh, these uh, wind turbines. If I get rid of the fence mode, I can do, for example, random rotation for them and I can just place them inside each other like this. Uh, you can you can do it, for example, with, uh, well, the nuclear power plant, yeah? Let's put a couple of hundred nuclear power plants in a line with completely random rotation. Yep, yep, something, something like this. And it's actually going to even give me the achievement uh, right now on Steam for, for some reason. So yeah, this is this is lagging the game a little, but uh, well, you, you can do it. So, you know, it's uh, the possibilities are there. Since I showed you trees already, there is only adult trees mod. It's uh, not exactly going to make trees instantly adult, but uh, you're going to place down the trees and after just a couple of seconds, they are going to grow into fully grown trees. Yeah, and there we go. After a couple of seconds of waiting, the trees are going to grow to their full sizes, as you can see. Apparently, it's some kind of a limitation of the computation of the game or something that it's uh, it's impossible to do it instantly, even though the line tool did it instantly. So I'm not really sure what's up with that, but uh, this is still super useful. A very useful graphics mod is the preserve photo mod. So normally if you would go, now go away milestone. Normally if you would go into photo mode and change anything in here, then uh, if you went uh, away, then it would just reset those settings, right? Well, not anymore. Now I can just go here, change uh, whatever kind of settings, do the hue shift, for example, and look at that. It's going to be like I changed it, even in the game. So now I can just play and have the graphics different. 
Next, there is the first person camera mod. And this one actually works so much better compared to City Skylines 1. So you're going to activate it by pressing Control F. It's going to move you to the ground level. And you can actually just look around very smoothly. And with just WASD, you can walk around just like in a, in a first person shooter game or something. So, all right, now I'm on the main street and I'm going to pause the game and I'm going to hold the right mouse button which is going to highlight the, the vehicles or people. And if I'm going to hover over the vehicle or have it in center of the view and let go of the right click, then it's actually going to put me in the perspective of the vehicle. I can still just look around. Yeah, there's, there's the car. Uh, and I can just see where the vehicle is going. And I can, of course, pause the simulation, make it go faster, you know, all these different things. And if I don't like to be in the vehicle, then I can just press WASD again and I'm out. And then there are three mods that are just somehow changing the simulation. So the first one is population rebalance, which is uh, changing the people, changing, for example, the life cycle. It uh, changes the thresholds for life cycle stages between adults, teens, seniors. It's changing the graduation logic, education needs and apply to school logic and some other things in the future probably. This is the first mod that I came across that's actually incompatible with some other mod. So be aware, you really have to pick one or the other. This one is incompatible with sim behavior improvements, which I believe changes mostly how schools or education behaves. The second mod is custom vehicle pathfind and that one changes, well, the pathfinding of cars. So apparently it limits those very dangerous movements by cars, by drivers. So in a way, it's kind of like increasing the IQ of drivers. It's, it's kind of like a subtle change. Uh, I would honestly not be able to tell in my city if I have the mod or not. But, uh, you know, your mileage may vary. And the third mod that I personally don't particularly need is the school rebalance mod, which uh, basically just increases the numbers of students for some types of schools. So I believe the elementary school by default is 1500. Uh, this one is upgraded. Uh, so I think that 2000 is now the basic value for an elementary school. Yeah, 2000. So, you know, if you feel like uh, schools are not balanced to the population, right, then you can get this one. These were definitely not all of the mods that are available right now for City Skylines 2. Uh, some of those other mods I tested, I don't particularly require them. There is, for example, the mod to completely get rid of uh, the need for hearsays. I don't really need that right now, but maybe in the future I will. I was showing you in that testing video how hearsays don't actually need to go to a building, so I think that I will not turn them off when I'm going to be doing some uh, detailing projects, but uh, you know, we will see. There are, for example, already some mods related to the public transport, like better managing of public transport, but uh, those I was actually not able to uh, make them work. So, you know, we are definitely in the early stages of modding CS2, but it's kind of surprising that a lot of these mods are already really high quality, especially the user experience is just pretty good. And they're working, they're working. They were just giving me some kind of error at start when I first got them. But since then I had nothing. I had absolutely smooth experience already with 21 mods installed right now. So. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing even before official modding support, right? So I really have high hopes for mods for City Skylines 2 and hopefully you will too. Well, anyway, uh, that is going to be all for this video. Thank you guys for watching it. If you found it helpful, if it gave you some interesting information, steered you in the direction of mods for CS2, then you can do all the things below it, writing, clicking and subscribing, sharing and huge thanks to the channel members. Thank you so much, guys. Your support is greatly appreciated. All right, I'll see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.